Stop 11. Introduction. Welcome to the audio tour for Pucker Gallery's exhibition of Metaphysical Intonations by Enrico Panardi. The text that you will hear to accompany these images is taken from an essay titled Reunion and Departure by Francine Coslo Miller. Miller received a doctorate in art history from Boston University and writes for Art Forum Magazine and Art New England. And she has taught art history at the Massachusetts College of Art, Framingham State College, and Montserrat College of Art. Thank you and enjoy. Stop 12, P226 and P230. Many pages in Panardi's sketchbook contain two drawings. One of the earliest triptych sketches presents a young girl seen through a window standing beneath a tree in P226. My mother used to stare out at that tree and dream of life beyond the nursing home, Panardi recalled. The central space presents an image of a young Enrico seated beside a hospital bed on which a giant fish lays tied by numerous ropes, physically and metaphorically bound by the inevitability of its death. The right-hand space contains a pier, a launching spot which leads to an expanse of water. These images result from Panardi's love for the sea, his attraction to religious imagery, and his assessment of himself as a carefree young boy forced to witness a beloved creature bound and helpless to escape fate. Below this lyrical drawing is a stark yet equally self-relevatory drawing. The central area of the cross-hatched ink drawing is filled with an empty hospital bed, and the right area contains another, more finished view of the wooden pier. Here the absence of the man, child, and fish imply loss, while the tree and the sea suggest resurrection, baptism, and freedom. Another image, P230, depicting Panardi's vision of his mother's world during her last days and eventual demise, includes a drawing of the chair in which she often sat. In the central section of the drawing, curtains have been pulled to reveal a sewing tray placed on the floor like a trap door. On the right of the drawing is a paradise-like scene, including a small pyramid and a group of deciduous trees, suggesting eternity and resurrection. In the more basic sketch below, the hospital curtain that covered his mother's empty bed has begun to grow roots. Many of these ink sketches are about motherhood, death, and the voyages of life and serve to spawn a new series of drawings and paintings called Reunion and Departure. The title describes a return to imagery that has much meaning for the artist. For example, the white bowl drapes, sarcophagal and portal-shaped figures, boats, and end tables. Additionally, Panardi had added a new vocabulary of images informed by great personal loss, 19th century Northern European symbolism, and a lifelong fascination with science fiction. Stop 13, P232 and P234. The central portion of a particularly poignant drawing contains an image of young Enrico, taken from an old photograph, wearing a jacket, cap, and short pants in P232. Hands at his side, he stands at attention within the arc of a small temple-like structure. Facing him is a female figure resembling a sarcophagus lid with roots sprouting from the void in its back. She is accompanied by a dark cloaked figure whose mask suggests that he is an Italian figure of death. In the left portion, the floor is replaced with ocean water, and a toy locomotive on the right side suggests that he was thinking of travel, his youth, and the Italian surrealist artist Giorgio de Chirico, whose paintings often featured a train engine to signify his father, who had worked on a railway. A meticulously rendered drawing, P234, occupies an entire sheet of paper and replaces figures, beds, and chairs with containers of water. In the center, a raised box-like form has overflowed, leaving water on the floor. The raised pool of water harks back to Belgian surrealist René Magritte's bathtub protagonists, but Panardi explains that for him, it is my mother's room in the nursing home, but everyone and everything is gone except for the ritual water. Stop 14. P240 P235. Another drawing incorporates Panardi's Ship of Fools positioned on an end table and offers his arcane version of Arnold Bocklin's 1880 series The Isle of the Dead in P240. In the symbolist paintings, a widow or ferryman shrouded in white accompanies a draped coffin in a rowboat to a rocky island with tall trees and burial chambers cut into the stone. Panardi's drawing positions a lone white cloaked figure 
on a wooden plank looking out his island of dead, while the ground below his crucifix diving board is beginning to crack open. In an untitled work from this series, P235, Pernardi presents his version of one of the men in black, encapsulated within a transparent jar in the left portion of the drawing, whose central image is a young boy standing in a pool of ocean water, from which a snake-like sea monster emerges. According to accounts from those who report encountering them, men in black have detailed information of the people they contact, as if the individual had been under surveillance for a prolonged period of time. Penardi, like believers in UFOs, suggests that his man in black, whom he calls the Monitor, a name taken from an obscure science fiction film, is part of a group of aliens sent from another dimension to keep an eye on us. They may seem sinister in their dark trench coats and dark glasses, says Penardi, but these extraterrestrials come here to watch us, get bored, and leave, and are meant to be benevolent in nature. Stop 15, P209. Escape takes as its theme humanity's concepts of good and evil, translated through traditional ecclesiastic and idiosyncratic symbols. The rich red background is balanced by two arched windows opened up to a serene blue sky. A missile-like object thrusts up from the bowels of hell below, creating deep cracks in the crimson ground. Although this malevolent object created by man is draped and hooded within a golden yellow cloth to conceal its true identity, it is an obvious hell-born tool destined for destruction. The central area of Penardi's illusionistically paneled Romanesque interior space contains a red sarcophagus with its arched back lid left open. It seems to be staring into the darker blue depths of the completely empty armoire, whose clothes rack no longer is in use. Now both the sarcophagus and the armoire are empty relics from the past and their inner powers are now gone. A sea blue snake with a red eye slithers across the central area toward a baptismal font in the right. Here, the incarnation of evil in the book of Genesis slithers on the red floor in the direction of a peach-toned baptismal font filled with holy water. The Christian sacrament of baptism, intended to free the human spirit from sin, is threatened by a conventional symbol of evil and temptation. Although his painting combines a stream of iconography from Egyptian through modern Judeo-Catholic times, Penardi's intent here is to represent long-established religions as mythologies in need of replacement. He includes the two open windows to suggest hope for a future where pure spirit will supplant what he considers to be empty and outdated belief. Stop 16, P204. The Last Voyage of the Ship of Fools, P204, is a night painting where a deep twilight blue sky, punctuated by lush green trees, rises over a space that appears to be a folding gray stage screen where Penardi's characters and props become part of a highly symbolic play. A raised box of ocean water is placed behind a gray cylinder, a tall abstract figure that represents Adam intended as an anchoring pole and to signify the artist. The central area contains a dramatic version of the Ship of Fools. The mast juts up into the heavens above, while the boat rests perilously above a giant black fissure in the ground. Within the ship, with the pointed mast head, seven passengers cloaked in black, symbols of the dead, are accompanied by a white shrouded ferryman. All appear to be eternally doomed. On the right portion of the last voyage of the Ship of Fools, the brown curtains of a narrow confessional are closed shut. No formal religious sanctions can save the shipbound spirits and their captain. Stop 17. P216. The Illusionist is a reunion of Penardi's favorite symbols from his earlier game series, combined with the quiet metaphysics and spiritual lightness of the work comprising the series titled Silent Ceremonies. Two end tables covered with crisp white tablecloths frame a central magic show. They quietly inhabit their own personal spaces where narrow sky blue rear walls offer celestial peace. A white magic wand floats above the end table on the left and a white bowl, Penardi's favorite symbol for virginity, levitates above the other end table. In the large central space, another ship of fools carrying cargo of four white shrouded passengers 
and a black shrouded ferryman floats indefinitely. Its rudder cannot steer and its large mast carries no sails as it rises up through a hole in the ceiling to the sky above. This ship is bound to nowhere. Instead, it levitates above a floating plank from the crucifix, which casts dark shadow on an ocean in a box, which it will never reach. A narrow, curtainless Tempiedo cabana, located in front of the boxed ocean, remains empty, perhaps awaiting another lost soul. Reunion and Departure is a significant group of poignant and heartfelt drawings and paintings. Ponardi's artwork has always guided him through his most troubling times, yet the results are marvelous and mysterious mazes of a life lived to the fullest. Ponardi continues to work his inherited and learned talents to the maximum, and now understands the value of weaving his real life and his dreams into his art. The whole purpose of Pinardi's art is to invite people to share his experiences and dreams. Many of his faces, like the best metaphysical art, may be uncomfortable to enter, but they are always entrancing, thought-provoking, and sincere.